All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of everything on Sunday, August 6, 2023. So, uh... I am in the middle of sharing with you perhaps the single best article I have ever found in the mainstream media right here on today's Yahoo News. Never know where the Baptist Doomer article uh, will show up. So this is a long article and interview from Salon Magazine titled, Are Humans a Cancer on the Planet? A physician argues that civilization is truly carcinogenic. And this excellent article, <coughs> which is required reading for any doomer trying to figure out the collapse of a planet, is by this journalist who I've never heard of named Troy Farah. So Troy did an excellent uh, long introduction to this interview, which I shared in part one of this two-part video, but my camera was getting ready to collapse, so I made it part two. So we are just going to pick up kind of where we... Uh, where we left off where uh, Salon Magazine and Troy Farah are dive, taking a deep dive into the question, are humans really like a virus, a pathogen, a cancer? <clears throat> Dr. Warren Hearn, a Colorado-based physician and author of the new book, Homo acophagus, a deep diagnosis to save the earth, argues that human civilization indeed has many similarities with cancer. This is not a metaphor, but rather a literal diagnosis, and it can be addressed in the same way that an actual cancer diagnosis can be the first step to treatment. Salon recently spoke with Dr. Hearn about his new book, which acts partially as a memoir, textbook, dire diagnosis, and poetic ode to a disintegrating planet, discussing the, implica the implications for such an urgent prognosis, a new name for the human species, that reflects our true nature and how we can still fix this crisis. This interview has been condensed and lightly edited for clarity. So don't worry guys, there is almost zero hopium anywhere in this story. So uh, this is, you know, a Q&A between tr journalist Troy Farah and Dr. Warren Hearn. Now this damn wind is coming in. Let me uh, see if my hat can block some of the wind. I, I love having the sound of planet nibbling behind my ranch. Okay, <clears throat> take it away, Troy. <clears throat> my opinion is that humans are a part of nature. We are not separate from it. He's going to become, Sancho Panza is going to become one with a chipmunk. You get that chip, you like that. <clears throat> After I came across your book, I began asking myself, are humans really a cancer on the planet? I thought, aren't we part of this whole ecosystem? I initially set out to disprove what you are saying, but the argument you make is so extremely convincing. 
I know from your writing that when you were first conceptualizing the notion that humans are a cancer on the planet, it was very unpopular. But now it seems like this idea has earned some mainstream acceptance. Is that true? This is Dr. Hearn. <clears throat> This is a fundamental scientific and philosophical question. And first of all, I agree with you that we are part of nature. We evolved in a natural ecosystem and we have obviously very intimate close ties with other species, other animals. Humans are unique in that they have culture Although we're learning that other animals have certain levels of culture also, like whales. So, we are really not unique in that sense, but we have a different and higher level of culture that allows us to dominate other species and ecosystems. These are cultural adaptations that allow us to survive, but they have become malignant maladaptations because they are now threatening our survival and millions of other species. We have essentially made a decision at this point as a species to go extinct. That's what we're doing. We are eliminating our biosphere and our planetary support system, consciously or not. And I think mostly unconsciously, although with each passing day, it's getting harder to believe that we are doing this unconsciously. When I first came on to this in the late 1960s, I was horrified. It's not an analogy. Nobody ever died from an analogy. It is a diagnosis, and that is different. The diagnosis is the same as the hypothesis. The guy comes into the emergency room with a sore belly and he has right lower quadrant pain. Your diagnosis is appendicitis until proven otherwise. But that's a hypothesis because he might have some other disease. I work with the idea from Karl Popper that science is not advanced by proving anything, but by disproving false hypotheses. The purpose of a hypothesis is to explain reality and predict events. This hypothesis, humans as a cancer, explains what we see going, in, going on in reality around us and has for a long time, and it predicts what is going to happen. And that means the prognosis in medical terms for cancer is death. The cancer continues until the host organism dies. The difference between us and cancer the only difference is we can think and we can decide not to be a cancer. If the diagnosis is correct, things will continue until we are extinct. The biosphere cannot go extinct. It can't die but we can alter it to the point that we can no longer survive and that will take out millions of other organisms. Clearly, plenty of organisms are going to survive that process. They might even be more intelligent than us. I don't know. 
that's sort of the general picture. And whether people accept this or want to even listen to it is another thing. For example, in the book, I talk about the guy who took over the anthropology section at the American Association for the Advancement of Science back in the early 90s. He didn't like this idea, and he wanted them to drop it from the schedule because his wife had cancer, and he was very offended by it. I told him, well, I'm really sorry that your wife has cancer, and I certainly hope she recovers. This does not have anything to do with your wife's cancer. Back to Troy. And uh, anyway, guys, we have the H word so many times that if I sit here and do my choking on hope, uh, it could double this uh, rant. So I'm going to forego to some of your relief the choking on hope uh, that we usually hear. So back to Troy. I hope people can see that because it's such a good diagnosis. I mean, it really does fit the bill. You look at maps of cities and tumors, and you can see how they kind of grow similarly, but the similarities don't end there. Back to Dr. Hearn. The basic premise is that humans have the capacity of developing culture and that has millions of manifestations. Everything from language and speech and mathematics to constructing shelters, building weapons, and having medical care to keep us alive. These adaptations have allowed us to go from a few separate species of skinny primates wandering around in Africa a couple of million years ago to being the dominant ecological force on the planet to the point where we are changing the entire global ecosystem. These cultural adaptations have now become maladaptive. They do not have survival value. And they are, in fact, malignant maladaptations because they're increasing in a way that cancer increases. So this means that the human species now has all of the major characteristics of a malignant process. When I was in medical school, we had four of them that were identified. Rapid, uncontrolled growth, invasion and destruction of adjacent normal tissues, in this case, ecosystems, metastasis, which means distant colonization, and de-differentation, which you see very well in the patterns of cities. That's only one example. We now have 10 or 15 other new characteristics of cancer, and the human species fits all of them. And so the disturbing thing about this if you have any two of just the first four characteristics of cancer, it is cancer until proven otherwise. And cancer does not stop until the host organism has ceased to function, which for our purposes is the biosphere. Now, I have given my book the name Homo Ecophagus, that's spelled E-C-O-P-H-A-G-U-S, Homo Ecophagus. That is my new name for the human species, 
which currently has the scientific name of Homo sapiens sapiens, or wise, wise man, which makes us the most misnamed species on the planet. Homo ecophagus means the man who devours the ecosystem, and that is what we are doing. We are in the process of converting all, all plant, animal, organic, and inorganic material on the planet into human biomass and its adaptive adjuncts or support systems. The evidence for that is all around us. So that's the basic idea in a nutshell. And then the rest of the book is simply manifestations of this malignancy and an explanation of the analysis. And so the next question is, can we do anything about this? Should we do something about this? It's very hard under these circumstances, for example, to think about Vladimir Putin sitting down with Zelensky to see if they can fix the ecosystem in Ukraine. Back to Troy. Right. It's a very, very difficult problem. It is the biggest problem our society faces right now. Literally, nothing else matters if we do not address this problem, says Dr. Hearn. That's the point. It is an existential crisis. Yes. Back to uh, Troy. I have to say that it seems like we're not going to solve this problem. I don't want to be negative and despair that we're all simply gonna die from climate change. I recently made a move across the country from California to Illinois. Everywhere you go, you get that de-differentation that you speak of where everything looks the same. Every freeway has the same strip malls. You see all these people in these giant pickup and semi trucks and all this overconsumption. I just don't see people giving it up. I just don't see it happening. Not fast enough, at least. Back to Dr. Hearn. This is what I call the ecophasic imperative. Robert Ardrey, a brilliant anthropologist about 40 or 50 years ago, wrote a number of outstanding books. One is called The Territorial Imperative, which we hear going on in the background. This is the, the Territorial Imperative. Can you hear the territorial imperative, which is about how humans have an imperative need to have and expand their territories. One of the most lurid manifestations of what we have right now is Donald Trump. Another one is Putin and the war on Ukraine, but Humans have been doing this forever, and now our malignant melanoma patients have been put in a position where we are devouring the earth. We are devouring the ecosystem. We have an imperative to do that. Look at the open pit mines that we have of various kinds. The whole alternative energy programs depend on destroying certain ecosystems to get the rare metal metals that we need to do that stuff. I do not want to be negative either. 
I am basically an optimistic and positive person. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this man is basically an optimistic and positive person. Well, anyone who, you know, who thinks that humans are going extinct, I have to say, uh, the only ray of optimism that I see anywhere is that humans are going extinct. So I guess I, like Dr. Hearn, am also a basically an optimistic and positive person. I have been my whole life. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change gives us a list of horribles, and it gets more horrible every year. But what's the underlying dynamic? I say this is a malignant process going on for hundreds of thousands of years. This is not new. When the Australian Aborigines, you know, the noble savages in Australia, arrived on the continent of Australia, they started changing the ecosystem in very dramatic ways, and a lot of species went extinct. My colleague here at the University of Colorado, Giff Miller, has been one of the people showing that, that it happened you know, when the noble savages got here in North America, it happened in the Pacific Islands. It happens every place. Humans have made other species extinct wherever they show up. Of course, it takes individual actions. The obvious side to that is people can make changes in their lives. I'm in Boulder, Colorado, for example, where they have a lot of recycling going on and people are very conscious of that. But at the same time, you have China putting in a coal-fired power generation plant every week. So it is very hard to see how all these individual actions can really have that effect that we want. <clears throat> and of course, we uh, get uh, to the end. We uh, dredge up the hopium and Troy asked the question that's on everyone's mind. Do you have a <laughs> Do you have a, a hope for the future or maybe feel despair about everything? I often get a little bit paralyzed and feel like there's no point to anything, like we're all just going to go off the cliff. I, you know, this is Troy speaking, uh, I am hoping something will change, that something will shift on a major level that will all kind of come together on this issue. Uh-huh. But I feel like I've been waiting for that moment for years. So how does Dr. Hearn respond to this obvious question? It's hard to know how to answer your question when you ask me, is there huh? Is there huh huh hope? One of my main answers, which is true, is that young people like you give me h h hope. I, I guess uh, that Dr. Hearn did not see the PlayStation riot in uh, New York City a couple of days ago. Yeah, young people. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Give him the H word. People who are looking at this stuff and thinking about it and figuring out what to do. When I look at the current political scene in the United States, it's very hard to be optimistic because we have a violent fascist movement that occupies the attention of at least a third, if not more, of the population supporting a man who is 
a sociopathic criminal, I think we make the decisions about these situations, the environment and our survival through our political process. Uh, and so then he spends quite a while. I did not realize that my hero, Dave Foreman, uh, died recently. So he talks about attending uh, Dave Foreman, you know, the Earth First guy, uh, that buddy of Edward Abbey's, you know, the monkey wrencher, uh, R.I.P. Dave Foreman. You know, and, and, and he's talking about how he's hanging out, you know, with the old guard back when environmentalists had balls. And, uh, you know, hanging out with all of these brilliant minds. But what did he come away with uh, heading home from Dave Foreman's funeral? What has been happening since they started Earth First? Things are a lot worse than they were. And it's very hard to see how that, you know, the former uh, environmental movement before it was co-opted by the global corporate uh, corporatocracy, it's very hard to see how that has really influenced the broad scale of things, even though they have had a lot of very specific local victories. More people need to understand that we are in an impending extinction crisis for ourselves and for the rest of the ecosystem and other species. We are destroying the planet as we speak, as rapidly as possible, and that must stop. We must find ways to do things differently, and that's going to make big changes in our lives. <laughs> Amen, Dr. Hearn. Let's see if I'm still talking. I don't believe it. The battery survived. So anyway, uh, get out there. and I might actually have to read this book. Ecophagus. Homo ecophagus. The man that eats ecosystems. Uh, but anyway, it is such a gorgeous day, and I have really got to get out there and be a human and exercise my territorial imperative to continue building. I'm building a, uh, a loop trail through the forest here at Bugs in a Jar Farm for my vacation rental guest to get out there and enjoy it while they still can. Little dog, are you exercising your territorial imperative to rid bugs in a jar farm of chipmunks? <laughs> Sancho, are you out there or not? Anyway, get out there and enjoy exercising your territorial imperative as a cancer on this planet while you still can. Bye, guys. Where is that dog? Sancho. Are you getting that chippy or not? Are you going to say, Pop? The chippy is in here. Look at this this excavation that uh <laughs> Sancho we have to go exercise our territorial imperative you go pop I am exercising my territorial imperative to tell that chippy he needs to go somewhere else all right let's head up 
into them thar hills as my next door neighbor exercises their territorial imperative with their gas sucking lawnmower which reminds me that to mow the grass bye guys